This video explains uh, the process of having the treatment called foam sclerotherapy, sometimes called varicofoam. It's the treatment that's used by the vein care surgeons. The first part of the treatment is to have a venous duplex scan. This allows the doctor to find out which veins need to be treated. Then the skin is cleaned with some antiseptic and then a needle, a very fine needle, is used to put some local anaesthetic into the skin to freeze it and then allow the doctor to pass into the vein that is faulty a small tube. In this case the doctor is using something called a venflon. This is the same kind of tubing that is used when people have a drip. The doctor is able to place the needle precisely into the centre of the vein using the ultrasound. That's why in this video the doctor keeps looking up to their left hand side where they're looking at the screen of the ultrasound machine. In this clip the ultrasound machine is being held by a vascular scientist but uh, the procedure can be done with one doctor doing both the scanning and inserting the needle. Once the tube is in the right place uh, the uh, needle part is removed and a special cap called a three-way tap is then placed on the end of the tubing. This stops uh, any of the blood inside of the vein leaking out. In order to test that the tube is in the correct place the doctor will then inject some slightly salty water into the vein and this can be uh, seen travelling up the vein with the duplex ultrasound. The venflon is then secured into place with some tape. For most patients with varicose veins they need to have the main vein in the thigh treated, the great saphenous vein, but also the veins uh, that uh, are, are being fed by the great saphenous or small saphenous vein. These veins are the varicosities and they can be treated in a similar way. Firstly the ultrasound is used to identify where the vein is, then some local anaesthetic is placed into the skin in very much the same way as it was placed to put the larger needle into the vein in the thigh. Sometimes it's possible for the doctor just to pass a small needle uh, into the vein under direct vision. Sometimes they need to use the ultrasound. In this case a 23 gauge butterfly needle is being used and that's going to be passed into the patient's vein over the front of their shin. The doctor knows that the needle is inside the vein when they see a flash of blood passing back down the tubing and you can see that in this image. This is a very careful procedure as the needle can become displaced. Once again the doctor will use the salty water to check it's in the correct place and use the ultrasound to make sure it's flowing through the vein. This is very important as the chemical that's used for the foam sclerotherapy can irritate the skin if it's placed outside of the vein. As before, the needle is secured into place using some sticky tape so that the needle does not come out uh, as the procedure commences. You can see from this clip that so far the procedure has only taken a matter of a few minutes to place the needles into the patient's leg and they're sitting quite comfortably on the couch. Once all the needles are in place, it's then necessary to elevate the patient's leg. This can sometimes be done using a special couch, but in this case, uh, a simple setup of a bandage on a sling and a drip stand. Once the leg is elevated, uh, we're now ready to commence the procedure. A pre-prepared syringe of uh, sodium tetradecal sulfate, or STD, has been prepared and this is then mixed with air to form a froth or foam which you can see in this syringe. The foam is first injected into the smaller uh, needle. The reason for this is it can passes into the veins that usually cause the patient problems but also it can make the vein in the thigh go into spasm which means less treatment is therefore required subsequently. The ultrasound once again is used to monitor where uh, the foam passes. And you can see in this clip that both the doctor 
and the scientist are working together. The doctor can massage the foam into the veins uh, that are affecting this patient. Once the small veins have been treated uh, using the butterfly, the larger vein is then treated. This has sometimes gone got smaller because of the previous treatment. Once again, this is a combination of injecting and scanning to ensure that the chemical has gone into the right place. You'll see in this clip that the scientist is holding the probe right up in the patient's groin and this will be to compress uh, the junction of the great saphenous vein and the common femoral vein. This ensures that the foam stays in the correct place uh, and therefore treats the veins that are affected. You'll see here that the uh, doctor is pushing some of the uh, foam up and down the thigh within the vein and then back down again into the tributaries that it's feeding. This is a way of getting complete treatment. Once the treatment has been finished, the doctor compresses the junction in the groin and the scientist uh, then scans the leg to ensure the foam is in all the correct places. In this clip, you'll see the shadowing on the ultrasound, which indicates where the foam is correctly in the veins. Once the treatment has been completed and the doctor's happy, it's then a matter of compressing the vein, as that's how the foam sclerotherapy works. First, a roll of cotton wool-like material called Velband is placed over where the vein is, and the needles are all removed. The compression is the most important part of the procedure, as the chemical that's been injected causes the vein walls to become sticky, and it's the compression that sticks the walls of the veins together. This is why patients who are treated by vein care doctors need to have compression for up to five or six days after their treatment. Once the cotton wool bandage is put in place, a firm cohesive bandage is placed around the leg. The bandage starts in the groin as this prevents the foam from entering the deep veins, but also allows the foam to stay within the veins that have been treated and pass down any incompetent tributaries. These are the veins that have caused the varicose veins. Once the bandaging has been completed, the leg is then straightened out, either with relaxing the uh, trolley or by removing the patient's foot from within uh, the sling. Patients then go into a full-length compression stocking, and in this clip you can see that this patient's been given instructions about the stocking uh, it's also possible to have a choice of stockings. The stockings usually have a thigh-high grip. Once the patients have uh, had the stocking applied, they're then free to stand up from the couch and they're all set to leave. The whole procedure only takes a matter of a few minutes.